Hello and welcome back to another great tutorial on Poser 11 and Poser Pro 11 by Renderosity. I'm Mark Bremer and in this tutorial we're going to look at some of the new facial posing features that come with Poser. It's a fantastic way to add some realism to your characters. It was simply very, very difficult to do in previous versions. So on the screen here, I've got Paul, and as we dive into this, I have to mention this is an advanced tutorial if you're new to Poser. Please check out some of the other free tutorials here at Renderosity on how to work with the program because I'm not covering shortcuts and things like that. I'm just getting right into the subject matter of the tutorial. Okay, got that done. Let's pop into our face camera right here and uh, take a look at our character in a little more depth. Let me zoom in just a little bit and I'll actually uh, maybe back out just a little here. Something new to working with tools right here for the character. And you might be saying, um, hey Mark, you're working with Paul an awful lot. It's because Paul doesn't have hair and the, uh, the default uh, Pauline character, the new one, well, she just takes longer to render. We've got our character set up right here. And you'll notice as I start moving with the translate tool, around the character that you see these odd little patches that show up on different places around the character. These are called posing chips and they were designed as a way to give you fantastic control over very specific features of the character. Why is this in such an important deal? Well, if you've spent any time with Poser you know that it comes with a ton, or I should say the newer characters, come with a ton of expressions but uh, usually they are kind of difficult to work with because they're a collection of dials and this gives you the ability to direct manipulate the character. Additionally there's some other features that you can only access through a keyboard shortcut while you use these that are impossible to use with the dial so it gives you some fantastic control and we'll get into that in just a second. Now to see where all these are we can come right over here to the pose icon Click that open and let's get into Paul here. He'll be in people. And uh, if they're alphabetically arranged, he should be right there. Face controls. This is going to give us the ability to show these all the time, hide them, or do a hover. The way it's on or set right now is that when you move the translate tool over these items right here, you will see them pop up. The little outline shows up. If you want to see them all the time, you can simply double click this little feature and you'll see all the locations on the face that they are, you know, put. So it looks like a, a bad tattoo. Somebody didn't have enough money to complete that. So anyhow, we've got that in place and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and do the hover item. And if you don't want to see any of this stuff, you can actually come down here to control handles hidden. And not only does that take these controls off of the character directly for direct manipulation, but it also hides them from some of the palettes that you can fly out so you just don't have to deal with them if you don't want to. So let's go ahead and do the hover controls here. I'll go ahead and click this back on so they do reappear. And it thinks about it for a second and we're good to go. Now let's go ahead and pop back in to uh, our character here himself. When we are working with the character, and of course to get to the specific head controls, we can go to body parts, chest parts, head. You'll notice head parts. These are all of the little uh, features that make up the character's face that are different from the head itself. If you want to get to the expressions in Paul, simply click head. And you'll notice that uh, right here we've got the basic transform properties, but as we scroll down, this is where all of the feature sets are for working with the expressions. Head shaping and all that. Fantastic, extremely robust set of tools to work with. And something I'll point out that I haven't mentioned in our other tutorials so far on Poser 11 is that the morphs that have to do with full body morphs, or FBMs as you see them, are connected together now. So I happen to be on the head right here if I decide to make our character a little bit heavy and dial up this, it's actually changing his whole body. If I come back to the um, main camera right here, if I go ahead and uh, give this guy some, some Cheetos action, you'll notice that even though I'm only in the head control, it's adjusting everything uniformly, which is fantastic actually. When uh, So you don't have to hunt down the full body morphs all the time if you're working with a specific, uh, you know, 
close area on the character themselves. So back here in the face, yeah, we're going to turn this guy into a heavy. He's coming to take your lunch money. All right. The first thing I want to do is start working with the character himself, getting him set up. Well, we'll do a little quick dynamic lighting on him to uh, show that off. For the face here and the facial expressions, the easiest way to get started with the character is to choose one of the basic expressions right here. And this is where we get into one of the tricks of characterization. If you are new to working with uh, CG and CG people, or have been doing it for a little while, but maybe aren't satisfied with how your characters look, a lot of successful tricks are to make the character asymmetrical. That is, that the facial expressions aren't the same, the face gets a little bit lopsided, because we're kind of accustomed to seeing that with real people. And that's one way to help kind of cross that uncanny valley. So what I like to do is to set up the expressions just with some of these dials here, because you know, it's a little easier to get these set really quickly this way. But you'll see the expressions are, are perfectly symmetrical. Now if I do browse down, uh, up a little bit, yeah, he's taking our lunch money, he's not going to look good. We'll give him a little bit of snarl. This is an asymmetrical feature, it's just showing up on one side of the character. Uh, you'll see the cheeks rising as I work with this, maybe that's not what I want. Hmm, wince, yeah, we'll pull up the bottoms of those eyes just a little bit. Now when it comes to head shaping, let me go ahead and collapse some of these so we don't wind up with too many. We can go ahead and, you know, it depends how much of, uh, let's see, give this guy a little more wrinkled brow here, how much of a, a heavy we want him to look like. So brown forehead, cheeks, chin, yeah, we'll give this guy a little bit of a cleft chin. And if we want to uh, broaden his uh, jaw out a little bit, this is where we may want to use some of the specific controls. We've got a little bit better. Eyes and eyelids, lip and mouth, nose, yeah, we're okay with that. All right, we've got our basic character set right here. Let's go ahead and start adding a little bit of personality to this, and more importantly, a little bit of asymmetry, so that we can go ahead and make them just a little more enjoyable to look at. I'm going to take this character here and maybe take his whole head and tilt it just a little bit. He's looking at you like, are, are you kidding me? Really? Let's rotate around a little bit. Now you'll notice as I work with the character with the translation tool, everything I do is set up to rotate or pivot. And it's around a point towards the center of the character. So as I grab his head, this is respecting the inverse kinematics chain, or in the case of when we start working with these little chips, it's actually kind of working against the normals. So if the normals are, if you imagine little imaginary lines that come straight out of the polygons, the little chips right here rotate around towards the center of the head. So instead of talking, let's zoom in a little bit and uh, actually start working with this. Okay, too close you say? Let's try this again. Now my little chip, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and over a little bit. I'm going to tilt his head a little more to the left. So with gravity in place, I'm going to go ahead and pull his face and sag it just a little bit to the right. So I'm pulling out from the normals. It's getting heavier on the left side as we look at it, the character's right side. And you know what? This guy's a little malevolent. Um, he may actually enjoy taking your lunch money. So maybe we can get him and we'll just grab the corners of his mouth and pull that up just a little bit. Stretch that out just a little bit. Um, get that lip down eh, a little. When I get to the eyelids here, maybe he's had enough of our uh, funny talk and um, you know his eyes are starting to twitch a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and just close these down a little. Raise up an eyebrow a little bit and we kind of get an oh really thing going on right here. Now as I move uh, this little chin chip right here, this is where we can go ahead and use one of the shortcut features that are available only by keyboard as you work with the character. I've mentioned that working with these chips, the items, shapes, work rotationally. That is, they go to the center of the head in this case. 
if you want to move them in a linear fashion instead of a rotation fashion, you need to do one of two things. Simultaneously hold down the escape key on your keyboard while you click, and this is only with the translation tool. When you click and drag, or you can hold down the question mark, kind of that uh, forward slash key, either one works, and that's okay. Let me show you what I mean right here, and it'll become very obvious. If I grab the chin here, and I work with it, we're getting a little bit of side to side, and I open the mouth here. If I happen to go ahead and, and turn him a little bit, you see, yeah, we've got uh, this going on with the mouth. Nice. If I want to move it sideways a little bit, then what I'll do is hold down that modifier key. In this case, I'm going to hold down the escape key. And when I click on this, we can see now the jaw, or the chin as it's connected to the jaw, notice the teeth aren't moving sideways. So maybe we get this uh, pulled over to one side just a little bit. I've released the escape key, and now when I go ahead and grab the chin and move a little bit, the whole jaw is rotating itself. So we've got some asymmetry going on right here like this. If, um, let's see, if I'm going to grab the corner of the mouth, pull that up a little bit more back. This guy's bad news. Yeah, he's starting to smile a little bit more. All right, last things here. Let's see, if I want to move the uh, tip of the nose up a little bit. Now you notice I can't pull it in. If I hold down the modifier key again, I can go ahead and move that in. So now we're starting to get, you know, a nice, pleasant-looking thug that's, uh, you know, just trying to do his job. Okay, if I come back in here and we choose body part, head parts, uh, actually if I come to head, let's see if we can adjust this guy's nose just a little bit. Yeah, we don't have any. Oh, there's some nose controls. Good, good. I knew they were in here, right? Bridge width. Let's widen this out just a little bit. And that's left. Go ahead and do right. We'll thicken this up a little bit. You can see now how it's starting to become uh, so, so easy to work with uh, characterizations. Oh, let's see. Let me get all my fingers off the mouse so it's not doing that. So we've got this nice uh, kind of a beat up look going on with our character. Let's look at some of the other little features that are new to working with specific parameters not only for these little face chips, it works uh, across the entire character now. If you come to the properties tabs over here, the dials, the property palette, and go to settings and you can get here by right clicking on it as well. New to Poser is the ability to animate and hide various styles right here. If you hide this, it will simply disappear off the selection right here. So if you're working with a long list of items over here, as we saw like at the, the master head level, right now these are in little folders that collapse with the uh, plus and minus key right here. If we just want some to go away, because either we're not using them or we're trying to you know, streamline the interface a little bit. You can just click hidden on these things. And if you need them to show up again, then you can go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and cancel out of this. Oh, and as long as we're here, animated, unanimated, with this unchecked, the feature will not animate. It doesn't mean you can't move it while you pose, but it's not automatically keyframing the change over time. So if we happen to move down the timeline and we want to get a little, uh, you know, a camera zoom in so we can see this guy getting more disgusted with me and my lack of lunch money. Um, if un or if animation is not checked here, we can't animate some of these expressions if we disable that on a, this case a nose bridge width right here. So just know that as we get into it. If we hide something and you want it to come back, then we can simply come back here and show hidden parameters and then we can go ahead and reactivate that. We'll open up if we made this go away. Well, let's quit talking. Let's do this. The nose bridge width right. If I go ahead and say settings, um, don't, don't want to see it. Okay. It disappears out of my stack in the parameters dial. So that means I would have to come back choose show hidden parameters and now we get a bunch that are actually <laughs> hidden. Um, so know that uh, if you do that, these all come back in, and then we would come back down to uh, nose bridge with uh, right, and I'd have to find that. 
Um, yeah. Do you really want to watch me play hide and seek? Um, all we would do is track that down because it is visible. Open up that option, and then uh, oh well, it'll take me a little bit, and just make it visible again, and then you can go ahead and say restore or whatever and get it back. So yeah, those are there, and I just jumbled up my interface a little bit. Well, I've got that set. Let's talk about how we can go ahead and use some of the lighting features. We have had some earlier tutorials this year on Poser 11 and working with the lighting features. So let's talk about the psychology of doing some rendering here just a little bit. I'm going to back out uh, just a little with our character. Let me come back to body parts, chest parts, neck. And I'll use the side by side. This guy's going to be going, really? Really? Are you messing with me? Okay, let's come back to uh, chest parts, head, side to side here just a little bit. Whoops, uh, we're at origin. Let's not do that. Transform. And this is where that uh, little bit of a sag to the face here. You know, the human face is very plastic. And uh, you probably notice that with poser characters, especially if you do any of those type of pinup poses that the body parts uh, totally ignore gravity and you have to manually go in and either have morphs to get bodies and faces to move the way they need to or not. So with this in place here, I've extended the cheek out, I've extended the, or I should say the, the upper cheek, I've extended the lower cheek and jaw so that as we look at the character right now, you know, we've got a little bit better look going on. If I want to go ahead and create a little sense of uh, um, you know, ominous nature to it, or maybe I'm getting uh, shaken down for my beer money, in fact, and not my lunch money, then what I can do is go ahead and do some standard tricks that if you, uh, you know, here's your homework tonight, watch television and watch some of either the crime dramas or investigation dramas, police dramas, and watch what they do with light. Very, very um, good ways to create mood with color of light and position of light. So with this light on the character's right, Let's go ahead and change the color of it to something more like a red. Many times for the uh, the dramas and stuff, they'll either have one super bright that's yellow back off to the side called a rim light or not. And this one I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of a nighttime character. I want to cast some decent shadows. And of course, if it's night, then what we want to do is get a little bit of a blue in here instead. And we can open this up and uh, deal with the different controls, but we've got a separate movie on that already. So with this in place here, let's go ahead and render our character out. Oh, there's Androgynous Paul. All right. Okay, calculating everything that's going on here. This is the default medium superfly render settings right now as it goes through this process to give us a look. So the ability to go ahead and grab these chips and work with them and create some asymmetry that gives you some great realism to your characters is easier than ever. It's good to start with the posing controls that you already have with the face for the advanced characters. Some of the poser 10 and earlier characters do have some expression controls like we just saw here. The earliest characters do not. But the ability to go in and directly interact with your characters and create a look is easier than ever in working with Poser 11 and Poser Pro 11.